This video is brought to you by KiwiCo. What does KiwiCo do? Well, they are redefining the future of play with hands-on projects and toys that are designed to expose children to STEAM concepts. And that is basically STEM concepts, but with art thrown in. Why are we doing that? Well, because everyone loves art, and we also like a balanced approach to learning. Don't we? KiwiCo comes as a monthly crate, two examples I have here that allow your kids to learn at home. These are all designed by experts, which is smart, and then tested by kids. Each month carries a new theme, and it's all about hands-on learning. So this one on top here, the smaller one, this is the Eureka line, which is for kids who are aged 14 plus. In here, check this out. This is what we'll be making, an electric pencil sharpener. And what's so great about KiwiCo is you know how sometimes you'll get something and it'll be like, oh yeah, this is great and exciting. It's like, oh, but it didn't include batteries. Guess what? KiwiCo include the batteries. They include everything you need. So it's not like, yeah, yeah, of course, get your screwdriver out. And it's like, I don't have a screwdriver. I'm complete. I'm just completely screwdriverless. Well, KiwiCo will include it in the box. It's got also got these cut things so you can put everything together. This one is for kids. I think it's 14 plus is Eureka, right? Yeah, so 14 plus. Now this, uh, I will be waiting many years for before I try it with my kids, who is uh, almost one year old. They are getting to the edge of the, uh, this uh, panda crate is for the younger kids. This is from zero to 12 months. And the theme of this month is all about chat with me. So improving a kid's language abilities, which, uh, you know, definitely something they need right now. First word was data, which I liked. Um, and basically lots of stuff in here that makes sounds, information cards for adults. So to get your kids, you know, language development going. And also, you know, different, <laughs> whoopsie daisy, nice little pieces and things to talk about. You can see here all of this great stuff, which my wife has been asking me to bring home because she knows KiwiCo is a sponsor. She's like, when are you bringing those kits home? And I'm like, dear wife, I have to tell the people about them first. These are just two examples of the age ranges. They cover everything. So get over to their store, find something you'd like to do with your kid and buy it. Plus you could just purchase one box. No need to subscribe if you don't fancy it. This holiday season, if you want to skip the video games and give a kid in your life something they can really learn from, click the link below or visit kiwico.com forward slash TIFO and you'll get 50% off your first month of any KiwiCo subscription line. And let's get into the video. The idea of sharks not liking the taste of humans has been around for at least half a century, with the first account of this notion that we could find appearing in a September 2, 1968 edition of the Evening Independent in an article titled, Expert Says Sharks Dislike Human Taste. In it, the associate curator of vertebrate paleontology at the Los Angeles County Museum of Natural History, Dr. Shelton Applegate, noted that it was his opinion that swimmers generally survived shark attacks because most of them, sharks, after they take the first bite, find that they don't like the taste and spit it out. And just for fun, in another article in the same edition of the newspaper, it notes that one Dr. John Tracy had recently come up with a revolutionary treatment for any disease that can't be cured by traditional means, beating it out of the patient in a process he called impact therapy, literally striking the patient repeatedly with a 20-pound sandbag until they feel better. All right then. So this all brings us to the topic of the hour. Do sharks really not like the taste of humans? First, a couple of caveats. There are hundreds of different types of sharks, only a handful of which have ever been known to bite a human. On top of that, accurately determining why a specific shark or any animal does something can at times be incredibly difficult, and the general view from experts on the subject can change over time, as has happened concerning this very question. That said, why certain sharks attack humans has been very closely looked at over the last century, and as a result of this accumulation of data, scientists today who study the creatures think they have a fairly good handle on why sharks don't usually eat people, at least in the general case. With those caveats out of the way when talking about the typical sharks people think of when discussing shark attacks, for example, great whites and tiger sharks, in a sense, yes, sharks do not like the way humans taste, but you'll get a false impression if you stop the video here. Because we're not talking about the flavor of humans per se, and sharks also seem to be weighing the risk versus reward on this one. You see, sharks are perfectly happy to eat red meat and in a pinch have no qualms about chowing down on you. But they are also seemingly well aware of the fact that the composition of the human body isn't an ideal food source for them, and also aren't keen on the fact that when bitten, humans have a tendency to fight back around a very sensitive and vulnerable region of said shark's body. 
body. So why do sharks bite humans in the first place then? First, to dispel one of the many shark myths out there, sharks do not bite humans because they mistake us for pinnipeds, sea lions, or seals, or any other of their preferred food sources. We know this because a shark's behavior when it is attacking, for instance, a seal, is very different than the typical behavior seen when they bite humans. As the director of ReefQuest Center for Shark Research, R. Aidan Martin notes, I spent five years in South Africa and observed over a thousand predatory attacks on sea lions by great whites. The sharks would rocket to the surface and pulverize their prey with incredible force. In contrast, he notes that when sharks bite humans, they generally approach with leisurely or undramatic behavior. Further, sharks are very intelligent and have extremely acute senses, including incredibly sharp vision and sense of smell. Lemon sharks can even detect tuna oil at a concentration of just one part per 25 million. As a result of good hearing, they can also detect bioelectric fields and minute changes in water pressure. Beyond that, humans don't really look like pinnipeds, neither visually nor likely from a bioelectric standpoint. It is noted that sharks respond very strongly to the smell of things like pinnipeds and fish, but not at all to the general smell of humans. Add it all up, and it is generally thought very unlikely that a shark would mistake a human for a seal, as is the common trope, and the evidence of how they approach us lends credence to this notion. This brings us to the real reason sharks bite humans. Curiosity. When sharks encounter an unfamiliar creature that might be a potential food source, they'll sometimes be inclined to investigate more closely. But as shark biologist Dr. Eric Ritter notes, the unknown is always potentially dangerous and, even for the shark, harbors a certain risk. Approaching or biting the unknown object is thus an exception and not the rule. When sharks do feel curious enough to approach and bite, the aforementioned shark expert R. Aidan Martin adds, When great whites bite something unfamiliar to them, whether a person or a crab pot, they're looking for tactile evidence about what it is. A great white uses its teeth the way humans use their hands. In a living shark, every tooth has 10 to 15 degrees of flex, which beyond taste and the smell of subsequent blood is another way the sharks can study a creature by biting it. So when investigating a human, it's generally the case that the shark will approach cautiously rather than the way they attack prey they're familiar with. If you seem like you're trying to flee from them, they may be inclined to approach more aggressively. Otherwise, if you just sit there or don't seem like you're going to attack them as they approach, for instance, if you don't see them coming, which may well be what they're going for, they might go in for a nibble to get a better sense of your body and if it might be a good food source for them, as well as see what you'll do in response to the bite. Unfortunately, even a quick nibble from a large shark can be life-threatening accounting for most of the deaths we humans suffer at the hands of sharks rather than them purposefully chowing down. Back to the idea that sharks don't like the taste of humans. As mentioned, this idea has been around since at least the mid-20th century, but as experts such as Dr. Daniel Boucher of Southern Cross University note, there is really very little evidence that the reason sharks don't eat humans is because of our taste, in terms of flavor at least. To quote him, normally sharks eat fish, but they don't mind red meat if they can get it. Seals, of very red meats, like humans from oxygen-binding proteins in the blood, and sharks eat seals. While sharks do have taste buds that tell them a lot about the composition of the thing it's tasting, distinct flavor does not seem to be a major factor that impacts whether a shark will eat something or not. For many types of sharks, the evidence at hand seems to indicate that their taste buds more function as a sort of binary eat, which generally is a yes as far as the taste buds are concerned if the thing is determined to be made from meat, or no if if it's not, explaining why sharks can happily eat carrion and rotting flesh if they're particularly hungry. In fact, the garbage cans of the sea, better known as tiger sharks, go even further and really don't seem to have much in the way of any sort of taste filter when it comes to eating things. For instance, tiger sharks have been found with things like suits of armor, fur coats, and live hand grenades in their stomachs. But we said at the beginning of all this that, in a sense, sharks don't like the taste of humans. So what sense were we referring to if they aren't too particular on the flavor of something? As alluded to, sharks don't like the way many humans are built. And it often requires a nibble for them to determine this fact. Many of the things sharks normally eat are extremely high in fat. Fat contains a little more than twice the calories per gram than muscle. Humans are often relatively bony, particularly in the legs and arms. This isn't ideal for the sharks as they have quite a slow digestive system, which is further slowed by the presence of all of our many thick bones. Since sharks need a lot of calories to maintain proper body function, spending a few days digesting a human instead of eating something much more calorie dense is not ideal. 
real. That said, and having other high-fat food sources available, humans, particularly those of us who decided to eat the entire six-pack box of ice cream and sandwiches last night, don't judge, still make an okay meal for certain types of sharks, and in the extreme case, some of us even make an excellent meal, though perhaps not the humans you'll generally find bobbing up and down on a surfboard in the ocean. But given options, and if they're not too hungry at the time, the sharks that are capable of chowing down on something the size of human prefer a nice, tasty, high-fat meal like a seal or tuna. This brings us to the second factor in why sharks don't seem to like to eat humans, this one having nothing to do with nutrition, and that's that they're afraid. Despite their fearsome reputation and status as apex predators, sharks don't generally like eating things that put up a fight. Particularly when talking about creatures the shark isn't terribly familiar with, and that are determined to have suboptimal nutritional value. When so animals fight back, there is a good chance the shark will be scared away if it's not too hungry. From there, it's interesting to note that where you are in the world actually may affect what the shark does next. Great white sharks in California have been observed to strike potentially dangerous prey, and then if the shark determined said creature is still an okay food source and it managed to wound it before fleeing, it may watch at a safe distance to see if the animal will die from its wounds, making it an easier snack. This same behavior has not been widely observed in many other regions like South Africa, where if a great white has decided to actually eat something, it will simply ferociously chow down on its prey as previously noted. But to sum up, a human's generally low fat content and the fact that we are an unknown, potentially dangerous creature that is putting up a fight, including being fully capable of gouging out the shark's sensitive eyes as we beat on their faces, which is the recommended way to fend off an attacking shark, though if possible using an object rather than hands and feet, makes sharks hesitant to do more than just investigate us as a potential food source rather than actually deciding to make us one. We're simply not worth the risk given the poor reward. So while it's not true that the types of sharks that occasionally nibble on humans don't like the taste of us in terms of flavor, it is in a sense true that they don't like the taste of us in terms terms of composition. And as afraid of sharks as humans often are, all evidence indicates the feeling is mutual. And this is perhaps for good reason. Only about a dozen people per year are killed by sharks versus approximately 20 to 30 million sharks per year killed by humans, according to the Florida Museum of Natural History's Department of Ichthyology. Who's the apex predator now, Sharky? And now for some bonus facts. Another shark-related myth is that they don't get cancer. In fact, recent studies investigating this idea have shown that sharks do get cancer on occasion, though how frequently isn't yet clear. According to studies to date, they do have relatively low susceptibility to cancer compared to many other animals, but at this point, the number of studies done and cases looked at are so low that this may well simply be an artifact of not having a broad enough sample size to work with. And now for another bonus fact. The mechanical shark used in the film Jaws was nicknamed Bruce by Spielberg after his lawyer. The shark rarely worked and often broke down during takes, and most hilariously of all, sank to the bottom of the ocean the first time they put it in the water because nobody had bothered to check if it floated. This led to the crew coming up with an alternate name for the prop, the Great White Turd. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Please do also check out our fantastic sponsor, KiwiCo, and thank you for watching.